slight deal. It looks like it needs to be a little bit more to the mesial slightly. You see, you can measure. Not bad. But in the, in the ballpark, that's what, what yeah. we, that, that's no, what we need. That's in, the good. in the ballpark. Now, uh, distance to the nerve, you can measure from the nerve. Does it have an automatic um, alert if you go? Yes, it does. So first of all, we save. If we accidentally, let's pick a 15 millimeter implant. Let's see what happens. It's important to save every step. Okay, so let's change the properties of the implant. Change it to 17, I'm just making it up. You're gonna get a collision detection. Right. It's gonna tell you your nerve, your, your implant is in the nerve. So we undo it. Now if you're kind of getting closer, dangerously close, Let's say I'm bringing this up to 13 something. It gives you, it tells you, you know what, you're 1.3 from the nerve. Right. You don't, you don't want to so be that close. So you anything, I, I guess, after two millimeters. Exactly. So we undo it. That's it. So this is one test. You look at the buccal lingual, and we're right in the middle. We look prosthetically. I think we're in a reasonable position. I don't think there's an issue with that whatsoever for screw retain. I can take off the restoration. You can pretend. This is the, you know, when you get the patient back, when you do the procedure, this is your impression coping. Mm -hmm. You're going to be fine. Now, last test before you order the guide, you look at the axial view. And I'm going to start traveling between the platform of the implant. Let's zoom in here. By the way, here you see the bone defect. You see this? There's a little bone defect here. Slightly. That's where you have a concavity. Right. You see this, uh, Jeff? Can you tell what level that's at? Well, it's um, about probably about a half a millimeter, millimeter from the top of the implant. It's a platform yeah. switch. So it starts a little bit narrow and widens. Right. Okay. But basically what I'm looking at, and that's, that's an easy case because you have so much room. Show contours. Do you have a surgical net with a report that says you're going to graft the buckle when you go through the implant and because of the defect? I make the decision that, you know, now. Time of surgery? It's time of surgery or now. I can prepare the patient. But you can measure that you have enough room to the adjacent teeth. I mean, you have tons of room. Mm -hmm. You have at the platform level. I mean, this is a space of, I'm talking between the roots. Right. That does not mean that the, 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 the crown is going to be almost 15 millimeters, but it's just between the roots. But then you have the crowns, it'll be probably a 12 millimeter molar. You can actually go up here, right here. Like now you can measure the real distance between the contact points. So it's a, it's a you know, it's a mesodistally a little bit narrow molar, but you know, no big deal. It's right in between. You can measure. So that's, that's basically the last step. Okay. Now, in terms of how you plan your procedure, this is not a flapless procedure. So what you typically do, you make an incision a little bit more to the lingual, and then you reposition all this tissue to the buccal, and you could do a little bit of grafting for contour. So that's, mm -hmm. that's basically the, um, the summary. Then you order the guide. Okay, let's call it Nobel BioCare. Now it gives you a report. You, yeah. you Call it Nobel BioCare because you have a Nobel guide surgery kit? Exactly. Okay. You have to have that. Right. B although this system will plan for any implant system, but you need the... You need to have a guided system, you know, you need to own it. Do you think getting involved in guided surgery when you're... <coughs> excuse me. When you're doing not a great number of implants, committing to one system, is it better to use, um, you know, there's some systems that you can use proprietary drills and then the finishing drill is set for the company. That's what I did when I did my first case. I used it. It's up to you. Yeah. 
I don't like that. Meaning, it, it for me, it's it's it, no, it's a headache. Okay. For me, it's a headache, but it works. You can. I did a fair number of cases where I needed to take parts from here and parts from there, and it worked. It's better to go the whole system for me. So you have a guided surgery kit for Nobel. Do you have one for Astra? Do you have one for no? Just That's why I use Nobel. In this so office, only Nobel. Only Nobel. Okay. Yeah, and if I do Astra. Say okay. Then you order the Astra. Okay. Okay. So now you can show uh, see a preview of the guide. So there are a couple of things to check for the guide. With people actually now, <coughs> at this point they just they just pay for it and then forget about the whole thing. So but you don't you don't have to create the contours of the guide. You don't have to create the guide tubes. You don't have. You'll see. You don't have that much control here. Okay. So that takes a few minutes. Okay, so this is an important um, statement. What it does, it tells you that you have drill depth control and you have implant depth control. What does that mean? That through the guide, you can drill all the way to the bottom of the osteotomy and you can place the implant through the guide. Sometimes you'll see a red X. And that means that you're working in between teeth and the system tells you you know, it's great that you want the implant in this position, in this length, in this diameter, but unfortunately the system that you chose does not have drills that are that long, and the mounts for the implants are also not that long, so you need to change something, or it's not going to be fully guided. In this case, it's ideal. Okay? So here it is. Now you have a little uh, preliminary view of the guide. Does, do you know what you have to change? Is it a matter of... Yeah, you change the position of the implant. You tell the system, you know, it, it's actually going to be a flat procedure, not flapless. So you can, all this gingival tissue, you can not take into account. You can place your tube lower. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically this is what it is. Here's your guide. Let's get rid of the nerve. Here's your guide. Okay. And uh, you have to check a couple of things. You need to make sure that the tube that they plant is not too close to the adjacent teeth. I mean, I may need to use, move this input a little bit more to the distal body. That's what I thought. And that the guide does not bind with the gum tissue. And of course, this case is you know, super simple. Then we can basically approve it and move to the next step. Okay. That's it. Pretty simple.